Okay, it's been a while since I've done a video, like five days or so, for a regular video. <clears throat> and one of the reasons is, uh, I thought about this for a long time, to wrap up this series on Clovis hafting. Thought about it for a long time and uh, looked at the questions and stuff, and the main questions seem to be, you know, uh, what do you think about the flute? Uh, Clovis was you know, brought by people, the movement of people, uh, because, you know, if you have a culture with a certain point type and it populates a certain area, they bring their point type. Well, I'll try to give you my opinions on these particular things. There are already answers out there. I don't really like, I don't really like them that much, but, you know, they could be right. I'll give you my own opinion on it. Uh, this is already this dead horse has already been beaten to death, but people still like to talk about it. So what I'm going to do is let's see here. Uh, yeah, I suppose I can use this color. So I drew a little sketch, copied it from the internet. I don't know if you can see this. I'm having trouble with lighting with this camera phone. I got two lamps on this, and I still can't seem to get it to to lighten up. Maybe it's the glare off the white paper. Anyway, I'm going to get a DSLR camera pretty soon. and We'll see how that works for these drawing and words type videos. All right. Anyway, Clovis came in. So let's see. Genetics have... Uh, we'll start off with genetics. Genetics have are telling us that peoples came in from Asia into the new world and populated the new world that way the genetics do not point to a european expansion as the original founding population of the americas okay the original founding population of the americas came over from asia that's what the genetics are telling us okay so we'll go with that so why would they come over Let's, let's look at that. Why would they come over, or how would they come over, or what is the process of doing this? Well, at the, at the time that uh, the Americas was first populated, you know, um, the, the predominant way of life was hunting and gathering, right? Not provisioning and exploring. You know, you don't pack up a bunch of provisions and go exploring like they used to do uh, when they developed sailing ships and stuff like that in Europe. No, you were hunting and gathering on your way to wherever you're going. So what were these guys up here in Asia hunting and gathering on the shoreline or on the land? Well, on the shoreline, they can hunt seals. If there's a way to cross on land, they would probably hunt caribou right but if you're coming across on land it's going to take you a while probably you won't even make it if you have to walk all the way down to the southern tip of south america you'll probably stop up here and say that's good enough but if you're hunting all the way down or if you're traveling by boat which maybe you're used to traveling long distances anyway Maybe you're going back and forth from Asia to the New World a lot. Uh, you would get to the south tip pretty quick if you used a boat, because there's really no obstructions other than storms and seasons and stuff like that. So uh, my take is they were hunting seals. Okay, so seals exist in this area along the coast all the way down. Doodly doodly doo. I looked this up on the internet. Down to the southern tip of Baja, California. And then right around here near South America, where the little island is, I forget what that's called, seals that start up again in this area and southward. All right, so seals are in all this, on these areas, except for this area right there. Now, they could have been hunting other things, whales, blah, blah, blah. But seals tends to be the predominant animal that hunter-gatherers like to hunt up in the north or in the cold areas because the seal skins are very, very useful. Not only the seal meat, seal liver, and all that kind of stuff is very nutritious and all that kind of stuff, the skins are very, very useful. 
All right. I just wanted to repeat that because it's important. Now, if you're coming down looking for seals, you're going to stop around here. You're not going to go further. Right? So why would they continue? Well, I don't know. I don't know why they would continue across this gap when what when their prey is is uh, not venturing between here. This is um, other animals, sharks and stuff in this area predominantly, I guess. Uh, or maybe the, maybe the seals are, are not liking the warmer temperatures, right? Anyway, that's one obstacle. Why would they? crossover when they got plenty of seals up here i don't know but it's possible um i do think that they did wander across this area uh they, I, I, I do think that they continued their boat building all across all around all along this coast okay so i think that they did get to the south america by boat predominantly but we're thinking that this happened now that genetic research is out we're thinking this happened before clovis the genetics are pointing to a a, a very um, different date than clovis for the original population of the americas are thinking earlier the genetics are telling us it's earlier than clovis so that means there would be people here somewhere. I think they populated the entire North and South America prior to Clovis. And that Clovis is, is a meme, but not in the meme in the normal, everyday, modern sense, where you have a picture and some words and it spreads virally between people because they think it's funny or whatever. Uh, this meme is a t technological meme that that just people thought it was a good idea but it wasn't necessarily the shape now here's where, where my opinion comes in when you think of clovis you think of the shape right and the flute the shape and the flute together you think of that as clovis but when you look at the different clovises and the different shapes there are different uh Clovis outlines. Uh, there's even little tiny ones. Uh, there's some with cuneate tips, like a cuneate tips, like I mentioned before. There are some. There's a couple of examples. I think uh, in uh, on the west coast, this thing made of obsidian with these little nubs and a flute. That that blade is different from these other Clovis blades. You have straight sides uh, with short tips. You have expanding bases sometimes. You have contracting bases sometimes. You have all kinds of different shapes for Clovis. You have lo uh, long and skinny and sometimes fat. Okay. All kinds of different blade shapes, but they're all considered Clovis because they have the little flute, right? To me, that doesn't make much sense, okay? And this is where my opinion is coming in. This doesn't make much sense because, let's take another example. Let's say you've got a point type that looks like something you find in other places, right? The base is the same, but the difference is... On this one, you got some beveling. This one you don't. So the flaking's different on this one. So let's call this a bevelous. Okay. Or how about a, a beavis? And if it doesn't have the beveling, it's called a budhead. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to go off on the, off the deep end on this explanation, but you get, I think you get the point. Because what happens is you get something over here, exact same profile, all right? 
exactly the same. Same time period, same material, same profile. Everything's the same except this one has a flute and this one does not. But they call this a Clovis. And this, what is it, a plain view? They call this Clovis and this plain view. It's like calling this a, a, a Beavis and that a butthead. Same, everything, everything's the same except one aspect of the flaking is different. Now, this is, you might say, this is different because it's tool wear, it's a uh, resharpening, it's different from basal thinning, it's not part of the technology as far as uh, initial construction, okay, totally different. This is initial construction. All right, there's no real logical basis for saying that it's the the basal construction is different from the edge construction. I don't think that you're on firm ground there because it's it's all construction of the point. It's all it's just because something's done before it's hafted or uh, versus after it's hafted doesn't make any difference logically. Okay, it's still a difference in the flaking, a distinctive difference between two otherwise identical points in time and space. It's just a difference in the flaking. This, this is just a difference in the flaking. All right? So this meme that I think occurred is not a meme of the Clovis overall shape because there's different overall shapes. I think the meme is in the flaking itself, just like people caught, caught on to beveling. This is a meme. This is a technique for resharpening. It's a it's a way to flake that passes from person to person to person. Same with this. I think Clovis is essentially and probably only basal thinning of this particular sort. You don't need to you don't need to use percussion or a large flake to thin the base. You can do smaller Smaller flakes, smaller flakes. You don't need a big flake, but some people like big flakes, just like some people like this beveling stuff. You can resharpen it without beveling, but some people like to do the, the beveling. All right, that's my take on the flute. The flute is a thinning flake, and it's a thinning flake that is a meme. It's a technology passed on to different peoples to use on different blades. They were not all the same blades. People, some some of these are fluted, some of these are not. In the same time period that supposedly Clovis. Okay? Now, you don't need a population of people to, to bring Clovis with them if that's the case. You can have North and South America pre-populated, okay, before this happens. And then the meme just transfers from person to person. And within a very short time, everybody has tried it out, and some people like it, some people don't. Okay? Uh, another aspect of this... Okay. Another aspect that uh, kind of uh, makes it difficult to believe that Clovis was brought by people. Uh, the Clovis point itself was associated and attached to a certain people. Is because if you look at what... Uh, what existed with Clovis or at the time of Clovis on this coast, on this side of, on this ocean, right? If you look at points like in Asia around the time that the uh, Americas were populated, you look at the point style, uh, there are different point styles in Asia, but there's one that is pretty common in Asia. They also have, you know, the leaf shape uh, they have the blades with the ridge uh, and they also have maybe the crescent shaped stuff all this stuff came in from Asia during the time of the initial population of the Americas and lo and behold yeah we've got these base uh, very similar I don't know why I said base a uh, very similar type of points here in the Americas. Let me let me get this. I can't uh, draw and talk at the same time. Apparently, 
you get the same type of point basically the whole way down the contracting stem point exists all the way down to South America the southern tip of South America the same thing this this contracting stem point let's see it's in here too at the same time throughout this whole area of course there are other points too but when Clovis uh, when Clovis came over supposedly or the age of Clovis is explored uh, you can find other points with this type of configuration with the a, a contracting stem or maybe even a straight stem all right but this this does exist all the way down now why does this make it look like they did not bring Clovis well because of the shape of the point it doesn't look like this the highest concentration of Clovis points that look like this are actually east of the Mississippi in North America there's a, I think there's a lot in Brazil too but those are fishtail points but anyway the highest concentration is over here in this part of the North America on the east side of the Mississippi River not these people that came down this way but these people here so it would appear that the basal thinning fluting meme started here and everyone started fluting all their stuff some people liked it better than others some people actually developed it into the primary way of thinning like in Folsom Folsom the primary way of thinning on a Folsom is the the flutes from the base the entire point basically is a flute on a Folsom so they liked it a lot Let me see if I can remember. Yeah, Folsom points, the perfect ones have, it's almost continuously from tip to base fluted with just very careful edge trimming. All right. So these people liked it a lot. Now, what else can I say about hafting? The, the base thinning is a hafting strategy. I think we should look at points not uh, do not look at points uh, not based on flaking because then we get into the situation where you know we're calling this beveling on a point this this beveling makes this point a beavis it, to me that's that's what I see because I see the Beavis and Butthead syndrome here where the, if it's not beveled in this way, then it's a butthead. <laughs> okay? Yeah, I'm trying to be funny, but still, yeah, I think you get the point. Uh, yeah, pun intended. All right. It, I, I think that this, this idea of categorizing a point based on flaking is bogus. We should not be basing the point types on flaking. We should base them on the hafting. Uh, not only the hafting, but the the intent, the use, um, and other things within the lifespan of the point. Okay. Uh, I won't say purpose because that gets into some other philosophical aspects. But the hafting, the intent, and the use of the point should be what we we need to do. What we need to look at when we're classifying these things. And um, this uh, fluting, to answer the question, uh, what, what, what's my take on the flute? I think it's a thinning flake that is a meme. It's a way to thin the base. It's not the only way to thin the base. It's not the only way to thin the stem. But it... it caught on very fast throughout North and South America within a few hundred years okay all right one other thing I'm going to wrap this up here one other thing I worked on today was a bone 
Clovis point. This is an elk bone. I just wanted to see what it would look like if I made it out of bone. This is the interior of the elk bone. And this here is just easily sanded in to thin that down. Now, do I think some of these were made out of bone? Yes, I do think probably because it's easy to relatively easy to make out of bone. How do I know? Well, here's another bone exactly the same as the one I got this one from and I cut the top off. Okay, you can get two of these Clovis looking things out of this one bone from each side from that side and from that side just by cutting down this way cutting down this way you know you take, you take a rock or a sharp rock right and you just sc keep scoring it's already got that depression in there you just score along this depression and score along this depression I mean it just lends itself to being cut there and cut there it takes a while, but it just lends itself to that cut. So you have two halves. Each half can be made into a Clovis point like this, or any other lancelet looking type point. The inside of the bone is already concave. That's what that is. This is the inside of this lower part. If you cut this off, well, the other side of the bone Okay, if you cut the other side of the bone off, you can tell. This you can't see very easily. Well, you can't really see on the other one either. Anyway, never mind. Uh, but I think you get the idea. Okay? So, the idea for this fluting could have come from working bone. It, could have, it might not have come from uh, a culture bringing the whole thing. It could be just, you know what? I wish we could do that with stone. Can we do that with stone? We can try to thin it like that, and lo and behold, you know, you can, with enough skill, you can actually do this to imitate what it looks like if you did it, or imitate what it looks like in bone. That's just a thought. Okay. I think that's it for this. I'm just going to wrap it up here. I was going to do a lot of drawing and stuff. Actually, I should have used my marker instead of the pencil I was fussing about not being able to read this because it's so dark hopefully that was okay and yeah I just did a, a quick uh, I did a quick glance for the stemmed point type uh, there's probably other point types that you know I haven't gone over or I might not be completely consistent all the way down but anyway, I did think about it because I was I was worried that uh, my opinions would step on too many toes. But, oh well, you know how it goes on this channel. Let's see. This is an inch and almost an inch and one eighth by four inches. Yeah. So it is within Clovis range and you can get a pretty thick piece right this is uh what's it that's more than a quarter inch thick so it's amazing you, you can use a bone an elk bone probably bison as well any larger animal to make one of these is it a coincidence i don't know we'll see okay